Welcome to MarcusG.TV. Chef Marcus Giuliano. And Jamie. And I am a chef on a mission, and today's mission is... Why transparency in marketing is key for the customer experience. So we're talking business today, and we're talking business, and this is a direct relationship to our 50 Mistakes website, 50mistakes.com, 50 Mistakes Restaurant Owners Make. Head over there, and I say restaurant owners, but really any business makes these mistakes. It's universal for many, many service businesses and businesses in general. If you have a customer that you need to talk to face-to-face, -face, you need to do marketing, this website is for you and it's totally free lots of goodies and this is just one of the uh one of the topics that we cover that we're going to cover that will make it onto this website and this is from forbes.com i really like forbes business articles the marketing articles i i really find them very relevant i find the people that write them are qualified or what they're writing is qualified so this one is from september 2015 16 16 16 i'm a year behind wow from Blake Morgan is a contributor to this, and it is called um, Transparency in Marketing. Uh, why transparency in marketing is key for the customer experience. On a warm day early in September, I was walking my dog and I saw a delivery truck for Safeway Grocery Delivery. It caught my eye because I use the app Instacart for grocery deliveries. The truck said in big bold letters, free delivery. It said in small letters underneath, for your first order. At first glance, it looks like a fantastic deal, and most of us on the road can't get close enough to a truck to read the fine print. That being said, it's a trick, and the marketer at Safeway who came up with the writing knows this, but it's dishonest, and it doesn't phase us because we are used to fine print. We are used to fine print. All these car commercials, when they sit there and just ramble everything off, and these ads that have all this small print, it's 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 frustrating for a lot of people. A lot of people look and they'll see something that says free this and they see all the small print. They won't even read the small print and they won't even, they'll tell, oh, that's not free because there's a catch to it. I actually read something yesterday. We had gotten this like, um, uh, spend $100 on this wine website or something. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so I started reading the fine print. It says, get $100 off a case of $160 or more right. so there was a catch right you know it wasn't just a hundred dollars off which i think most marketers that's what they use right they use catches to get they your use attention. they use catches and, catch. and we're guilty of certain catches as well in our, catch. in our business but we try to state the obvious right up front save fifteen dollars on the purchase of two entrees right is what we write right on there we write free gift on the front fifteen dollars on the purchase of two entrees in big letters on the back of the postcard or whatever right. we're doing so we're not and then, yeah there is small print because we can't apply that towards alcohol and that's a state law we can't give away alcohol uh it's not applied towards tax because we have to pay sales tax on it and you still have to tip the staff separately right so there's there are there there are you're going to have to have small print but i think to purposely be contradictory from what you're giving away in the snap like your first order the, what their hope is they want to get you in the system Right, and then you'll oh. get in the system, you'll like it. Yeah, you'll like it, right? and some people won't even read the fine print and just think that all their deliveries are free and so not the realize. the next time they order, they'll get a delivery charge and probably won't even notice. People don't even look at their bills a lot of times. Right. They, we know that in the restaurant business. People just, I'll take that and here's my credit card. They don't even look and see what's on their bill. They don't question. They just go. So. Uh, for a long time, marketers have been liars. And we've... Uh, I like to say storytellers, but liars. And we've accepted that because we don't have other choices. But today, customers have more choices than ever. And customers choose to do business with companies that are honest and even transparent. We'll pay more to do business with companies who refrain from gotcha marketing. Um, no one feels like, uh, no one likes to feel like they've been made or no. had. Nobody no, I, likes to, to feel that way. Yeah, I can't say when I walk into the mall, which I barely go to the mall, and as a kid I remember saying, oh, look at that look at that jewelry store. They all have 50% off. If you can mark down something 50%, it's 50% too high to begin with. Right. Because there's still, I look at all these sales, the store is still making money at 50% off. Because they're not there to lose money. Of course not. So it's like, wow, the margins are that high. And they are that high. Whether that's not being upfront about the actual downside of the offer, offer, offering sponsored social media posts that don't deliver any value or other ways companies trick customers. The marketer is faced with two roads, 
One road is paved with gimmicks and tricks that confuse customers into clicking. The other road is lined with nothing. At the end of the road is the product that was promised. I, you know, there's, when you study marketing now and you look at all these people online, all these top marketing gurus that are selling these books and stuff, you hit a landing page and you're on this video that doesn't stop. And then all of a sudden it's like, there's only 84 copies of this book left and you can't pause it. And once you get to the, to the cart to buy something, it's like you have 12 minutes to complete this and the timer starts going down. There's so much pressure that people are buying things because there's they're pressured into it right. as opposed to making a decision. And that's part of marketing. We we put we put timelines on our on our um, of course. on our offers, but we give like 45 days, 90 days, 60 days. We don't put something out there and say, oh, free $15 gift card, come in, in the next seven days. <laughs> or that's, 12 minutes. <laughs> right. That's kind of really, you know unrealistic to, to do that and put pressure on people because then people are going to say oh there's that place that gives these great offers but we can never use them so they turn you off they tune you out they they disrespect they, they don't respect you as much anymore because they know they can never use right. something right today we are accustomed to the perpetual smoke and mirrors that mislead customers traditional business practices includes making things seem better than they are Sort of like how food photographers often use paint and chemicals to make the food brighter and more flawless than it actually is. So I did not food photography, but I did show work for several years as a young chef apprentice. Yes. We made show work to get presented to judges. Then none of that was real food. It was, so, it was real food, but it was nothing edible. And a lot of times you'd put a scoop of ice cream, it was a scoop of butter. It was a scoop, it was, there's so much non-real food in those food things and when you see pictures of like I remember years ago I, there was a lawsuit against McDonald's or something because they put up this picture of the Big Mac or something that looked nothing like what you got in the store <laughs> right and it's misleading it's you know I always tell people when you in the restaurant business take pictures of your own food don't rely upon stock images yeah of I don't food. like that when I when I see stuff and Pe even a lot of times people who we're using to do advertising for us, right? Or companies, they'll send us things with stock pictures stock and images. it drives me crazy. Yeah. It's like, that's not even what it looks like. When I go to a restaurant, I wanna know what it's gonna look like when I walk in the door. You have a smartphone now, you can actually take high quality pictures on a smartphone that you can use for ads and websites and all your promotional things. You don't need to hire a professional photographer. You can take that photo and then touch it up and maybe send it to somebody who can do some Photoshop and make some magic with it happen because that's easy to do. So the person who does your advertising, your mar graphic, mar graf graphic, graphic, art. graphic art can actually touch that up right. for you or even come take the picture for you at no charge. Right. But don't use those stock images. It's extremely misleading people. Restaurants, people see that and they, oh, well, my food's never, the first thing I think is my food's never going to look like that because they can tell it's a staged picture. And when they get there and they sit down and eat, they're like, wow, that's not what I, what I thought it was going to yep. be like. And they won't come back. Right. When companies choose transparency, the benefits are many. Uh, the same article in Fortune shares an example from Domino's Pizza who surveyed its customers in 2008 and even with some very bad commentary from customers, shared the news publicly and asked customers to help them fix the, the pizza. That's a great idea. Use your guests to help. Get feedback. Use your guests. The company's company stock is $105.11 as of today, up from $7.73 in 2009. That's awesome. There are many upsides to honesty in marketing or any aspect about the customer service. For us, transparency is a major thing for us. We like to share everything. We, you know, we, we tell you how- You ask us a question, we're gonna give you the answer. We're gonna give you the answer. And we're gonna show you the box and we're gonna show you the label and we're gonna show you um, or tell you exactly what it is. Truth to us is very important. Right. And, and you know, sometimes the truth you don't want to say the truth to people. We'll tell we people. We dropped your pizza. We dropped your pizza. We have We're to make a, to make a new one. We dropped your burger bun. We dropped the top of it. We have to do a new burger bun. It takes three, four more minutes. And what do people say? They go, I've, "That's never been told to me before in a restaurant that my food's been dropped. And they have to make me a new one." And then they start thinking, "Well, gee, I've probably eaten food that's been dropped before, and these restaurants have pulled one over on me." When you're completely honest, you know, and we'll say to the guests. You know what? We're sorry it's taking so long. For taking your food. We're so sorry. We got really the chef, busy. The, we got really busy. 
the, sh the food got put up in the window. The sh Marcus didn't like the way the pizza or whatever, whatever looked like. Looked. So he's having them remake your food so you're getting what you expect. And customers respect that. Absolutely. As opposed to sending them something that they won't like. I was always taught in this business, if a customer's waited 45 minutes, waiting another 10 minutes to get what they want is nothing. Getting um, what they want, I mean getting what they don't, don't want, want is a is major worse. fail major major fail and that's when you're going to have problems and be honest and explain to the customer we give them soybeans or olives we give them something to sort of buffer their time sometimes if 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 we screw up and we need some more time and sometimes people don't want anything they just like the honesty they want the honesty honesty i see a lot of parallels between how brands make themselves attractive to people online and how people make themselves attractive to other people online let's think about the way we choose a mate in our own lives Many people are trying to find that perfect match to online dating websites. Some brave individuals lie about themselves <laughs> online. They write that they're taller and thinner than they actually are. Now that this person falsified who they are before you've even met them. I bet you wouldn't want to date them. And that's funny because we, I was talking to somebody just recently who said that they went on a date and um, the minute they walked in, the person did not look anything Anything. like what they what the pictures were online and they actually said i'm sorry you don't look like what you are online and and i'm not gonna stay yeah. and i thought that was pretty yeah pretty great but i think a lot of people who put things online number one um if they're putting things that are not true they don't feel good about themselves so they're just hoping that they meet the right person another person is lying who's lying <laughs> <Another> or, <right. laughs> or that they connect in some way. That person will say, oh, I feel so bad and I'll stay. And then they connect right. on a, on a non-visual. On a more of an emotional, emotional level. People come here all the time on blind dates to the restaurant they and they'll tell us, that's not the person that was in the picture. Right. That's, you know, how do I get out of this date? You know, I wasn't expecting this, Right. you know? So yeah, it's, it sucks. It totally sucks to be lied to. In fact, you would have dated someone fatter and shorter, but not this person, right? Because they're already lying. So you're right. already starting something in a lie. Yeah. Because this person isn't comfortable with who they are. If the shorty would have owned their height, you might have liked them. But because they lied, they misled you and showed you they're insecure. I am, uh, I am a shorty, so I feel like I can say these things. Do brands do the same thing today with their marketing? I think so. Absolutely. For many years as marketers, we've made things shinier, bigger, and brighter than they actually are. And this is terrible for the customer experience. The reason is you are starting a relationship with your customers by letting them down. Consider this short story about strawberry. Seth Godin, great author. Love Seth Godin. Um, he's the author of Marketers Are Liars, recently published a blog called The Strawberry uh, Conundrum. His books, his, his, his books are very fantastic. good. Fantastic, and I've read good. the books, Marketers Are Liars. Yeah. Yeah. I've read Purple Cow, I have a video on the Purple Cow. All of his books are spot on fantastic. Every grocer has to decide when packing a quart of strawberries, should your people put the best ones on top? If you do, you'll sell more and disappoint people when they get to the moldy ones on the bottom. Or perhaps you could put the moldy ones on top and pleasantly surprise the few that buy. Or you could rationalize that everyone expects a little hype and they'll get over it. A local grocer turned the problem upside down. He got rid of the boxes and just put out a pile of strawberries. People picked their own. He charged more, sold more, and made everyone happy, happier. Hype might not be your best option. <laughs> we were taught a long time ago in culinary school, you know, that they pack the apples, they put the apples on the bottom, the bad ones, I'm sorry, the good ones on the bottom, and they fill them up with the bad ones, but when they sell the case, they flip it over, and when the person opens it, the chef, they're like, oh, look at all these nice apples, right? Right. <laughs> and they don't get to the bottom of the box, which used to be the top of the box when they packed it. Right. The grocer that stopped trying to trick people in the end was able to sell more strawberries and make more money. I bet the grocer had higher customer loyalty numbers as well. After all, customers like when, they, when you don't treat them like they're stupid. Too much marketing today treats people like they're stupid. That's the bottom line. Let's, let's, this is a great article. Great we'll, article. We'll put a link there. I mean, that's basically almost, that's the, end, a, almost, almost the end of the article. Event. But be transparent. And in the food world, in restaurants, if you're a restaurant, being transparent about your food sourcing is the number one trend right now in restaurants. People want to know what they're eating. They want to know where it came from. And they don't want you to lie about it. People feel very, I mean, personally, if you lie about food to me, where it's from, because 
food is such an emotional thing. You eat it, you are what you eat, it assimilates into your body, you become one with it. It's one of the most intimate things we ever do. And if you're telling me I'm eating wild salmon and it's really farm salmon and I have very strong opinions on farm salmon like I do versus wild salmon, I'm gonna be very upset. I'm gonna feel this person ripped me off, they poisoned me, they did whatever, they're big liars, they're con artists, they're scam people. And technically, when you lie about stuff like that, it's, it's that's breaking the law. There's truth in menu laws for restaurants. You just can't mislead people and say, oh, we baked this, but it was actually fried. So be transparent. Yeah. Be transparent and, um, you know. And if you're a restaurant that can't be transparent because of what you're serving, you're in the wrong business. Be proud of the ingredients you serve. Hey, you know what? If you're a diner and you don't care about stuff like that, then say, hey, you know what? Yeah, there is trans there is hydrogenated soybean oil in our, in our French fries. There is... Tetery, diphospho, exhosophane, whatever the chemical is. Right. You know, there is a, there is that. There is sodium benzate in our soda. And when they ask and say, oh, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of places when you ask what's in that, oh, we, we, what's the standard answer? We don't have the box anymore. Right. We don't have the package anymore. We don't have the box anymore. It's not that hard to figure out. What brand are you serving? Go online, look it up, pull up the ingredients and tell the Wonder customer. The <laughs> common thing is I ask, well, what's in the bread? Because I want to know what's in the bread. Bread can, bread can be stuffed with a lot of fillers, and you know, and oh, we don't have the package anymore to the bread. Really, you've gotten the bread every day for the last five years. You don't, you don't know what's in the package right. of bread. Come on, you can easily find it out. Yeah. So, transparency super important with advertising. Don't leave people on. Be transparent about the product that you're offering. To sum this up, people need to know whether you're in whatever business, whether the tiles made in India or China, or whether the salmon's wild or farmed. Be truthful, be honest, be upfront. It'll and give the customers a better experience. Yeah, absolutely. Just like the strawberries. Let them pick and charge more. Give them people don't mind paying more. They don't, if they know what they're getting. Some people feel good about paying more. The same people that feel good about paying more will get upset when they feel they get ripped off. Yes. Because you haven't delivered expectations and putting this free delivery on a Safeway thing and then all of a sudden I'm having to pay ten bucks. Local printer here used to charge $15 for an email. To print off of an email. We would send them an email and say, hey, print this for us on your printer before we got a good high quality printer. And they wouldn't put that as a separate line item on the bill. So it would be 50 copies, 18 bucks. And I'm like, 50 copies, 18 bucks. They're like, yeah, there's a $15 charge in there for printing. I'm like, but it doesn't say that. It just says 50 copies. So if I walk to you with a piece of paper and it's 50 copies, how much would it be? They're like three bucks. I'm like, but that's not being transparent. Put copies, 50 copies, three bucks, and then put email service charge, $15. Right. Because now I'll have the opportunity to say, don't, I'm not gonna send you an email anymore. I'm gonna walk you over with a disc. Or I'm gonna walk over with a hard copy of it and you make copies. Here I think I'm doing something that's convenient and it was convenient for me and it's convenient for them too. You and don't then, have to stop what you're doing. You can just print it. From, yeah, right, I don't have to walk there. It was very there. difficult for us to understand why they would charge money for fifteen dollars to open an email and print from an email. Who else would do that? But it wasn't on the invoice, so I got pissed off. Yeah. If I would have known, if I would have known that, and if I was listen, if I was getting a two hundred dollar print job, and I it was, the print printer was a half an hour away, and I needed it when I went there to pick right. it up, and it was a big print shop. Fifteen bucks is no problem. I'll email it over. I know I'm getting charged at fifteen bucks. When I get there, it's going to be ready, and I can go. I don't have to waste time. Right. Fifteen bucks is worth the time, but not when you're wrapping it up and, and and disguising the invoice. Yes. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. And Jamie. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please hit like, subscribe, pass it on, and get over to fiftymistakes.com. Get on the email list there. We send out some great emails. A profit perks email goes out usually every week with tons of information like this to help you improve your business. We're also there for coaching and consulting. And uh, there's some free downloads. Take advantage of all that.